Middlesex slipped to a comfortable four-wicket defeat at the hands of Glamorgan in their latest Friends Life T20 match at Richmond on a pitch which was thoroughly enjoyed by the spinners. Neil Dexter won the toss and batted first and Paul Sterling launched into Will Owen, hitting him for a six which landed in the scoreboard to just a third ball of the match. But that turned out to be the only maximum of the game as Middlesex struggled with the bat on a bright evening in West London. Sterling was the first to go as he pulled Owen one-handed to Alviro Peterson at mid-wicket. He went for nine in the third over and was followed in the fourth by Stephen Crook who got a thin edge to a slow ball bouncer from Graham Wagg, a delivery he used frequently on this slow pitch. The Panthers had only 23 runs on the board with two men out by the end of the fourth over and so it was left to Chris Rogers and Dexter to try to kick-start their innings. Alex Jones and Owen both bowled expensive overs as the run rate increased until Peterson introduced his spinners who had an immediate effect. Dean Koska removed both batsmen in the space of three deliveries in his first over. Rogers, having made a top score of 30 from 21 balls, turned the left armour to mid-wicket. And then Dexter moved too far across his stumps and was bowled behind his legs for 11. Runs were suddenly difficult to come by and when Scott Newman was bowled by Robert Croft's well-disguised quicker ball, the Panthers were in trouble. John Simpson went in Croft's next over, sweeping the ball to deep mid-wicket where Ben Wright held on. Alas, Jamie Dalrymple was unable to shine against his former teammates as he was expertly stumped off a leg side wide for 10 as Croft claimed 3 for 18 from his four overs. Koska was even more difficult to get away, this being a rare boundary as Tom Smith carried the total to 87. And on that, Middlesex lost their eighth wicket. Koska exacting his revenge to have Smith caught by Peterson off a leading edge as the bowler finished with figures of 3 for 11. The Panthers were in danger of being bowled out for double figures, but Ryan McLaren and Tim Murta did manage to get their side to 100. Before Wag, who'd by now switched to bowling spinners, such was the nature of the pitch, bowled McLaren for eight. Peterson, no doubt delighted to have lost the toss now, finished the innings off with the first ball of the final over as Murta was bowled. Middlesex had been dismissed for 102, with eight of the wickets falling to spin. Dexter avoided the temptation of opening with his slow bowlers and that paid off when Mark Cosgrove was bowled to the very first ball of the reply. Now we had a game on again. But in spite of that very early loss, Peterson still played his shots as he tried to get the job done as quickly as possible, making the most of the pace used in the power play overs. He knew that life was likely to get more difficult once the Middlesex spinners were employed and he dominated a stand of 30 with Jim Allenby. Allenby's contribution was only five. McLaren then had him caught off the shoulder of his bat at mid-on by Rogers. Next ball, Wright was plumb in front. The second Glamorgan batsman to be out for a golden duck and Middlesex were given some hope. Indeed, at the halfway stage, Glamorgan were actually behind where Middlesex had been after 10 overs after Peterson was bowled, swinging across a delivery from Dexter to leave his side on 59 for four. By the end of 14 overs, the Dragons had lost Chris Cook as well, as he offered Dexter an easy return catch. In the end, the biggest difference between the two sides was Mark Wallace. He made batting look easier than anyone, scoring a runner ball undefeated 40. With only five runs needed, Wag tried to win the match in style, but top-edged McLaren to Simpson. McLaren ended with three for seven from his three overs, but that wasn't enough as Croft finished off the game with a neat flick through mid-wicket. Glamorgan had won by four wickets with 17 deliveries remaining to complete the double over Middlesex this summer. They move into the quarter-final places, while the Panthers have a lot to do to qualify now after picking up just two points from their opening five games. There are, though, still 11 more to go. And next up, it's Sussex at Lords on Thursday.